Hello, my name is Justin Roach. I'm a staff veterinarian in the Animal Industry Services Division of the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture. This video was created to assist in training veterinarians how to properly collect samples for chronic wasting disease testing. If presented with a whole carcass, begin by positioning it in dorsal recumbency. A truck bed and tailgate is a good height for this and will decrease back strain. Oftentimes, however, only heads are presented, having been previously removed at mid-neck, which is the case in the following examples. This is fine and the sampling procedure is the same either way, but lymph node sampling is generally easier with the head still connected since it doesn't have to be held still during sampling. If sampling cannot occur promptly after death, the head should be removed and chilled in a refrigerator or in an ice chest on top of ice. Heads should never be frozen, as this will destroy the integrity of the tissues to be sampled and make sampling and tissue identification significantly more difficult. This video breaks the sample collection process into four steps. Step one, retracting the larynx. Step two, identification and collection of the medial retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Step three, removal of the head. And step four, collection of the obex. The larynx is the large laryngeal cartilage at the ventral side of the animal's neck. In this video, I take the time to palpate and identify this cartilage. With my finger, I create a small indention at the cranial margin of this cartilage. With the scalpel, cut directly into this indention. From this point, cut laterally through the hide to both sides and then downward towards the back of the ears. Next, widen this incision and cut deep through all the soft tissues of the throat. Cut as necessary now to retract away the larynx to give you better visualization of the sample area. Here's another example of retracting the larynx. The medial retropharyngeal lymph nodes are a pair of lymph nodes that lie near the base of the skull just dorsal to the opening of the oropharynx. We will use the opening of the oropharynx as our landmark. The lymph nodes will lie at approximately 5 and 7 o'clock of this opening. Use forceps to grasp the lymph nodes and excise them with scissors or scalpel. Once removed, cut away the excessive connective tissue and place these samples in formalin. 
For comparison, the video displays the lymph nodes below salivary gland. These lymph nodes are typically ovoid in shape and range from the size of a nickel to a quarter. When fresh, these tissues are beige colored and have a shiny surface. Lymph nodes are also much firmer than surrounding soft tissues. The salivary glands are generally a pale pink color, lobulated and flatter. Here's a second example. Notice here the lymph nodes aren't immediately visible at 5 and 7 o'clock of the oropharynx opening. An additional dissection is necessary. In the third example, notice the pale color of all tissues due to slight decomposition. Use the same landmark to identify the lymph nodes. If necessary, palpate for the firmness of the lymph nodes compared to the other soft tissues. In this video, I use the forceps to indicate salivary glands all along the lateral walls. These are the most common sample incorrectly submitted as lymph nodes. Salivary gland is again removed for comparison. A special note, when animals die of hemorrhagic diseases, traumatic deaths, or if tissues are not fresh, the lymph nodes may be darker as in this picture. If this is the case, the best way to identify the lymph nodes is by their firmness compared to the surrounding soft tissues.